The man getting off the helicopter with President Trump is Mark Meadows, his last and favorite chief of staff. That was quite a moment. I believe that's when the president uh, was uh, going to the hospital for COVID treatment. Uh, they became very close and they remain close. Mark Meadows, also a former congressman from Western North Carolina, joins us once again. Sir, welcome back to uh, the show. How are you? Uh, well, it's great to be with you, Greg. I would be a lot better had we not heard the reports of what General Milley allegedly has done. Uh, I, I can only describe this as unbelievable. In fact, when I heard the reports, Greg, I said, uh, listen, this has to be some kind of lampoon. There's no way that he did that. But as uh, the denials uh, uh, cease to come and, and, quite frankly, indirect confirmation seem to come out of the White House and DOD, it's very troubling. It is pretty wild. So let's go through it. Bob Woodward. And part of me was wondering, you know, is this some sort of just a marketing stunt by Bob Woodward? Right. He does that kind <laughs> right. of thing. He teases out pieces of information. We know he makes right. stuff up. I've seen him do that before. Um, I, quite frankly, thought he was fireable for how he treated the president last year, that walk across the street. But number one, let's go through the China phone call. He allegedly called his counterpart in China to say, we will not attack you. And uh, if we do, I'll give you a heads up to me. That just sounds too fantastic. I mean, we were not on the verge of attacking China. Such a phone call would be ridiculous. What are your thoughts on that specifically? Well, as someone who was in the room who would know exactly what we were planning to do and what we weren't, uh, obviously I can't talk about national security secrets, but this has nothing even close to reality. It wasn't even contemplated, quite frankly. It wasn't even discussed. And so for uh, General Milley to reach out to his counterpart, which obviously uh, generals do from time to time, joint chiefs do from time to time, but this kind of commentary uh, not only would have been out of place, but it wouldn't have been based on facts. The only thing I can hope is that this is water cooler hyperbole, where he uh, gets off a phone call and says, I told them this and I told them that, trying to appeal to a leftist audience like he does after he reads his Twitter feed. <laughs> yes, uh, I have a feeling uh, that is very much the dynamic as well. He tipped off the world, he tipped off me at least, that he was working for the swamp, not for the president. Again, I'll go back to that famous walk across the street. Um, he apologized for this in the most uh, bizarre way. And what did the president do that was so offensive? He was in front of a church with a Bible. Um, you must have considered jettisoning him at that point because that apology was just so over the top and weird. And look, the president is with a Bible in front of a church. I'll point out that same church has a Black Lives Matter banner in front of it right now, and everybody seems fine with it. I, I just can't figure it out. Did you think about firing him? Well, obviously, uh, when when he uh, went without approval from the White House to give his uh, apology uh, news conference, I got on the phone right after that, and I, you know, I said, General, you, you're talking about not wanting to be political. That was the most political thing that could be done, and uh, and it was his comments about his Twitter feed and how he, he thought it was being misrepresented and what he had uh, what he supported. But the truth of the matter is, when he was in the Oval Office, he supported the president. President going across. That's why he was there front and center in the picture that you have right before your audience. Uh, he, he was not complaining until he got pushed back from the left. And so it was Secretary Esper, General Milley, both of them uh, doing news conferences that not only were not authorized, but, but candidly offered a very different narrative than uh, what happened in the Oval Office before that walk. This is curious. Uh, Vinman, remember uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vinman? <laughs> He, uh, quite a character, uh, a bit of a drama queen. He put out a tweet himself, though. And look at this. If this is true, talk about a friend of the left. General Milley must resign. He usurped civilian authority, broke chain of command. Hey, takes one to no one, right, Vinman? And violated the sacrosanct principle of civilian control over the military. It's an extremely dangerous precedent. You can't simply walk away from that. Uh, do the right thing, Milley. Um, again, takes one to no one. That is something else. Overall, um, uh, Congressman Meadows, Chief, there are so many books coming out and they're saying, I think, anything they want to about you guys. The standards, there don't seem to be any standards anymore. 
Well, listen, for someone like General Milley, who uh, wants to be apolitical and, quote, told me, I don't talk to the press, well, we're finding out in real time that, obviously, if he's not talking to the press, he's got a great publicist who is. And uh, and as he's done that, this portrays a much more... Uh, uh, ferocious General Milley than what I actually served with. I can tell you, you know, he's coming across in a lot of this as a tiger when he was more like a pussycat when uh, when he served under President Trump. But this undermining, this sabotage that, that certainly is coming out now is not helpful. Perhaps it's payback because General Milley uh, really blew it with regards to the Afghanistan withdrawal uh, to suggest that he had no knowledge that uh, trouble was ahead uh, just does not... Uh, uh, meet with the facts. Well, the swamp, by the way, right now is treating him like a hero, like uh, General Milley was the one keeping us all from the brink of nuclear war. Here's a sample of mainstream media coverage last night to the new revelations uh, in the Woodward book. The new bombshell on the final days of the Trump presidency. The secret moves the top U.S. general reportedly made out of fear the then president would start a nuclear war. Trump rogue, the book bombshell. America's top general worried then President Trump would spark a war with China. We'll tell you the dramatic steps he took to make sure Trump wouldn't launch a nuclear weapon. Stunning revelations in a new book that America's top military officer was so concerned former President Trump might spark a war with China in his final months in office, he took extraordinary actions. Hey, 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 give me a break. <laughs> Just like this is... So overdone, so exaggerated by him. Water cooler talk, I think you nailed it. Um, Greg, Greg, let me hit one point. He never mentioned anything like that to Secretary Pompeo, never mentioned anything like that to me, never mentioned anything like that to the National Security Advisor. So if he had these thoughts, uh, he should have brought it to the appropriate people. And candidly, I know for a fact that he didn't bring it to President Trump. Yeah, I mean, if you're that concerned truly, why go to Bob Woodward five months later? Why not go to all the players and save the world in real time? I mean, why not handle it that way? So it, it really is extraordinary. It doesn't add up. All right, I got to ask you. I know you're in touch with the boss, uh, the president. <laughs> uh, he told me about 2024. He said, I can't tell you yet, Greg, but I think you'll be happy. Um, <laughs> what are you guys doing? What's next? Well, obviously, uh, he, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, he, he can't make any official announcements, but you'll be happy. I can tell you right now what we're doing is uh, I'm looking at, at staff and what would actually potentially be uh, people for an administration, whether it's his or somebody else's, that will not do what General Milley uh, has just uh, been alleged to have done. You need to make sure that you have people supportive of the American First Agenda, whether it's him running or someone else. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, if I were a betting man, I would bet that uh, Donald Trump throws his hat in the ring. And he'll be uh, even better prepared next time. Let's face it. He learned a lot. He learned a lot. Uh, so Mark Meadows, we appreciate it. Once again, former chief of staff to the president, senior partner at the Conservative Partnership Institute. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you, Greg. All right. Be right back.